Well, here we are again. And if you were with us last week, I promised you a crazy one. And today you're going to get it. I think you'll enjoy this. Let's look at the canvas for just a second. I have a canvas here that's painted half white and half black. The bottom half, about 11 inches up, is painted with a flat black acrylic and allowed to dry. The top is just plain. On the bottom, I've taken and made one circle of phthalo green in the center, covered the rest of it with phthalo blue. The top is covered with magic white as usual. So, let's do a fantastic painting here. I'm gonna start out with a little bit of, this is a little bit of white, brown, a touch of yellow in it. And we're gonna make a seascape today. We're gonna make a violent seascape. And we'll just make a little circle right up in here, like so. There we go. Now, to that, I'm gonna add just a touch of brown and a little bit of blue. And we'll make another little circle right around it. There we go. And we'll just let that work all the way around. And right down in here, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the blue and work that right in. Just a little bit of the phthalo blue that's bleeding off the black. There we go. Bring this right up to the first circle. And then in the very back, this is just brown and blue, just dark. What a nice dark color back here. Maybe, maybe in this painting, the sun's sort of sneaking through the clouds and the big storm's coming. Okay, wash my brush. And we'll blend all this together. Mm, looks mean and dark already. Just blend this guy together. There we go. Now, right in the center, I'm gonna take a little bit of the titanium white on the one inch brush, go straight into the canvas, and build a happy little sun back here. There we are. With a knife, we take off the excess paint, and we blend that together just so we have the indication of a sun. Now we can start the fun. Let me get the brush clean and off we'll go. I'm gonna use brown and blue, more brown than blue because it is much, much stronger. The blue is much stronger than the brown. Maybe we'll put just a tiny bit of crimson in it. Now, a little bit of paint, and we're really going to push this into the canvas. Get strong with it. Really, really push it into the material. Bend the knife. Push it in. There. There's really not a great deal of paint on the canvas. It may look like it, but there's really very little paint and it's pushed very firmly into the fabric. Okay, and now with a clean, dry brush, and be sure it's dry, we're gonna start pulling that paint. There we go. Just pulling it, very gently. Now, that went so nice, let's go a little bit further. Still using brown and Prussian blue, more brown than blue. We'll make some, we'll make some almighty storm clouds in here. Ooh, it's big storms coming. There we go. All right, now, maybe there's a little happy cloud right down in here. Just grind this paint right into the canvas, push it big cloud over here. There he comes. Really push that paint. Remember that you're the creator and this is your sea. You can do anything that you want to do here. And we decided we want to build an almighty storm today. There. Really work that paint in. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Far back in the distance, it's beginning to rain a little bit. Just pull that down. 
it looked like it's a little rain, way off in the distance. Now, with a large brush, I'm going to blend this a little just to pick up the excess paint. The more of this excess you can pick up, the easier it is. I don't want it to smear all over the canvas. Now, if you're doing this at home with us, be sure your paint is very, very firm. If you're using a thin, oily paint, I can almost guarantee you this won't work. Okay. Now then, let's put a little bit of highlight on these clouds. Use just a little bit of titanium white, and I'm just going to sprinkle some highlights here and there. Since this is our light source, we can always keep that in mind. Just a little bit. And a little bit over in here. There we go. want to get rid of excess paint because it'll smear. So very gently we take the knife and lift that right off. The value remains in the canvas. Just lift it off. And I suggest you wipe the knife between each stroke. Otherwise you'll put a big dark line there when you go back. Okay, now that we've got the excess paint off, we can take the large brush and very gently, very gently, just blend this together. And it still gives the impression of highlights without having the, the real bright colors. Because we want to retain the darkness in this one. If we're going to have an almighty storm coming, we've got to keep it dark and cloudy, mean looking. We're almost letting the brush touch the canvas right here. Just lift it, fluff it, blend it out. Now, a little more white. And right here, maybe, maybe there's some little clouds that just sort of float around here. There they are. Just let them fall in. With a large brush, very gently. I'll blend those. And maybe you want to push them even farther back. If you do, put some more little clouds right here in the front. And you can just push those farther and farther back. It creates a lot of distance in your painting. So many techniques are very flat. And this, this has tremendous, tremendous depth in it. And our rain we back in there. There we go, a little bit of that blue. Mm. Okay, maybe, maybe another happy little cloud. Just keep building depth in it. All right. Now then, let's start making some water here. And I'm gonna start with a palette knife and use a little bit of the titanium white, very, very little. And where the black and the white meet on this canvas, automatically that'll give you your water line. You don't really have to worry about it, but just touch. Start in the center and work outward so it gets darker, darker, darker as it works out. And here, all we're doing is laying just a little paint on the canvas. There we go. Just here and there. We're not too concerned about it yet. Just let it let it fall wherever it pleases. Okay. With a large brush, clean and dry. Just go across. And we just put into all that together. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the cad yellow, a very, very small amount, and a little bit of white mixed together. Right underneath here, put just a little touch of yellow, just to make some pretty little reflections there. Now there's blue underneath, so this yellow should turn basically green when we blend it. 
just to give some nice yellowish greenish highlights here. Now, with our large brush, we'll blend this again. Look what happens. Ooh, son of a gun. Okay, now we're ready to take our fan brush, and I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of magic white to it. You need the magic white to thin it just a little tiny bit. Very small amount, so it's a little bit thinner than what's up there. And then we can start applying little waves and stuff. And test your fan brush. You'll find it bends better one direction than it does the other. Keep the brush moving. Keep it playing. Let these little waves just fall right out of it there. There we go. If you put one in you don't like, just wipe back and forth and it'll go away. Or you can put a little shadows and highlights and stuff underneath it by doing that. There. And as we start getting closer, we begin putting just, just a little more detail here and there. Bad sea. The storm is coming. If you live close to the coast, it's a good time to be finding a new house. Just let that fan brush work and play in there. Choppy little waves. All these little things just happening. Maybe some little wee back in the distance. There. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of alizarin crimson and Van Dyke brown mixed together. And maybe we'll make, maybe there's a little coastline back here. Maybe there's a little hill that runs right down into the water. There we go. Just a basic shape. Now, we need to take a little bit more of the white, and we're going to splash some waves up on this. Barely touch. And whoosh, give it a little whoosh, upward pull like that. Makes it look like that water's hitting and splashing up the edges. Okay. A little bit more of the brown and crimson. And maybe we'll have another one right here. What the heck? We'll put this one in front, and maybe he's a big almighty cliff that comes right down to the water. There. Just have your brush strokes go in the direction you want the land to flow. Okay, now, once again, a little bit more of the white, and we'll splash some up in here. Just let it hit, and pew. that water slide up into the rocks. There we go. And over in here we need some happy little things that are happening. And if you wanted to, you could take and maybe put the silhouette of a, a few little trees back here on this. Just take your little fan brush and put them up. They're going to be in trouble soon if there's a storm coming. Ooh. And the liner brush with a little bit of oil. And just put some little trunks. All we want is silhouettes way back here. Just here and there. Just to give indication of something way, way back in the distance. There. Them trees are really going to catch a devil in a few days. Okay, and we'll take a little bit of, I'm going to use a tiny bit of ochre color here and just very lightly put a little highlight here and there. Very, very lightly. Just enough to, to break it up a little. Make it look like little trees. And I told you this one was crazy. Are you enjoying it so far? Good. OK, 
Okay, a little bit more of the white paint. Let's have an almighty wave in here. That son of a gun, boy, it just, it hits and splashes. Like so. Let it go. Let it go. And maybe it's really splashing here and we have foam ever which way we... Mm. A lot of foam. And now we can begin working on the shape of this big wave here. It's really a big wave. It's just piling up, getting ready to crash on some rocks. Okay, maybe, maybe it's beginning to curl in some places, so let's just draw a little curl. And then we grab this white and pull it over, pull it over, pull it over, pull it over, just like so. Grab and pull. And that creates that. And if you want it to play a little bit, maybe, 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 maybe there's a little light shining through there. And creating a nice little, nice little bright glow in there. We're gonna just put some yellow right on top of that and let it turn green. A little bit of white. Just let the light shine through there. Back to my white. There we go. Yeah, these strokes are most, most important. Now, grab another fan brush here. A little bit of the straight blue, and I'm going to darken right behind this just a touch. Tiny little bit. Just darken it up a little. There we go. Now, we can come down here and begin playing a little bit. And let this water splash up and through here. And put it on, and then we can take the big brush and dull it down a little. And let's make a happy little stone out here in the water. Like right here. Water's crashing up against him. This is straight Van Dyke Brown. Just a big old stone out here. See, you thought I'd made a mistake when I put that there. I knew it was gonna be there. Then I'll take just a little bit of umber, just straight umber, and we'll put a little highlight on this stone. It's quite dark, so we don't wanna, don't wanna use bright highlight. Just straight umber. Something like so. There. Nice rugged stone. And we need some water that's splashing up on the stone here. Let that water run down it and follow right up the wave. All these little foamy things happen. Now at home where you have unlimited time, you can have water dripping all over the sides here. Oh, there's just a multitude of things that you can do with this. It's really the idea we're trying to give you. And with that idea, then you're limited only by your imagination. Okay, let's go right into here. Maybe, maybe there's another little stone here. These stones are such fun, let's just do several of them. Burn number. Just lay a little highlight on top of this one. There we go. Almighty stone. Okay, now we need a little bit of water splashing around this one. Maybe there's even a little over here. And once again, phew, make it look like it's running right up there. Some little things happening down here. All kind of little actions are going on in here. Let all these.
these little waves splash and play and have fun. Now, if you're painting along with us at home, I bet you never believed you could perform this. You could do a seascape like this in just a matter of minutes. Think what you could do if you took your time. There's really no end to it. Okay, now we'll just lift up a little bit, just to quieten that down a touch. And maybe, heck, far. We're having so much fun with stones here. Maybe, maybe there's another one over in here somewhere that the waves just fixing to sneak up and get. You can put as many of these in as you want. Just let them happen. And a little more of the burr number. Touch. There's absolutely no pressure on the knife when you're doing this. When you make these little rocks, no pressure at all. It's literally, it's just the paint touching the canvas. In your mind, remember the blade's not touching the canvas. It's only the paint and there's no pressure. No pressure, it's just barely, barely touching. If you push hard, you're gonna just mush it in there and look like you decorated a cake. Okay, now, put a little bit of foam right around here. Just let it splash, right up to rocks. Make that action fast when you do it, just real quick. It makes it happen so much better. Now, if you wanted to show a little bit of water, maybe dribbling over the rocks and places, use a very, very thin paint. Thin it with magic white. Make it very, very thin. And touch, and just barely, barely touch it. Barely, barely touch it. Let it play. See how you can make that water just dribble right over the rocks? Maybe there's a little water coming right across the top here and just running down this rock. With all this splashing and foam carrying on here, there's got to be little puddles all up on the top up in here. So just let this water dribble. Dribble. That's the word I learned in the South. I like it. We've been doing a lot of classes for our friends in Florida. They are fantastic people. We have really enjoyed being there. Okay. This is a little bright right in here, so I'm gonna take the large brush, just very gently touch it a little bit, and that'll take some of the brightness away. Just blends it into the colors underneath. Now, in case you joined a little bit late, let me quickly go over what we've done here, because this is so radically different than anything we've done in the past. I started with a canvas that the bottom part of it is painted black with a flat black acrylic and allowed to dry. The top remains white. We cover the top with a thin layer of magic white. On the bottom here, I made a big circle of phthalo green. And around that circle, I put mostly phthalo blue and then right around in here, Prussian blue. Or you can do it all in Prussian blue. You really don't need the phthalo blue, but if you have it, it's, it's a very warm, sparkly blue that you might enjoy playing with. Then blend it all together with long, horizontal and vertical strokes right in here. And then we begin. The colors that we use are transparent. Be sure these colors under the black canvas are transparent. If there's any doubt in your mind, put a little bit on some black and look at it. If it doesn't look black still, then they're not transparent. But phthalo blue, phthalo green, sap green, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, all of these are very, very transparent colors and you can do fantastic things with them. And practice using them in combinations. Some of the pictures we do, we use stripes of different transparent color. So play with it at home. You won't believe what you can do. Sometimes I talk too much. So I think we'll sign this painting. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's given you a lot of fantastic ideas and will start your mind working, your imagination going crazy. 
and you too will come up with some unbelievable paintings. So let's sign this one. I've thinned the paint with a little bit of oil and turn it to bring it to a nice sharp point. Turn it. Okay. Boy, signature in red really stands out against this blue. But now, once again, we've mentioned on other shows, let us know what you want to see. And in the future, we'll try to produce paintings that you want at home or that you need some help with. So I think we're going to call this painting finish. The old clock on the wall tells me it's time to go and leave you for today. So on behalf of everybody here at WIPB, we'd like to wish each and every one of you happy painting and God bless. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.